Kia ora and welcome, I'm Andrew Whiteside, this is an Entertainment New Zealand special. Well Jamie McDowell is a fantastic Kiwi songwriter, she's just released a new album and she's about to go out on tour. Jamie McDowell's first album, Six Strings in a Sailboat, went gold in New Zealand. She's just released a new album called Ask Me Anything and hopes to repeat the success of her earlier album. This month she heads around the country on her very first live tour. Hey Jamie, welcome. So good thank to meet you. you. Thank you for having me. So congratulations on the album. You must be really excited. Yeah, I, it feels actually quite strange being in my second album process um, because I do actually feel like I have done this before. Um, but obviously I'm two years older and the writing's a bit different so I guess the excitement comes from wanting to show my fan base I guess a more progressive side of me, yeah. What were the inspirations this time for this album? I don't know if it's just me getting a bit older but I stopped writing so much about myself. Um, you know the first album was a lot about my own stories whereas I'm not really sure what triggered this but with the second album I've just been a little bit more interested in meeting new people and finding out what their life is about and taking inspiration from their stories or even my friends' stories. It's just been a bit more interesting for me, I think. Do you ever have um, writer's block? Not really. I think, you know, I guess I have a, a different attitude about it. I mean, I never am trying to write songs. They always just kind of come at a time where I feel frustrated or inspired by something. Um, and there will certainly be times where there's not as much of that. But I just try not to get into that kind of feeling that there's such a thing as writer's block because I, I feel like that's su such a mental thing, you know, then maybe you will come across it. Whereas if you believe it's exactly. not real, <laughs> it might never come. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah fingers yeah. crossed, yeah. yeah. Who's inspired you, do you think? Who, what kind of influences musically have you um, had? You know, it's, it's hard. I feel like I've got sort of two separate influences. So I've got musicians that have influenced the way I want to be creative but I don't necessarily have musicians that have sort of influenced the way I write or the sounds that I want to create. So I, um, as a kid, grew up listening to a lot of country music. So John Denver and Jimmy Buffett are quite, are quite um, predominant in my influences, but probably more in the fact that they write stories and music that can be just as powerful on an acoustic guitar as it is on a record. So. I think it's that kind of thing that I take away, but when I do get into the studio, you probably won't find me going, let's make this sound kind of like this, or let's take things from this artist. It's more what you feel at the time kind of suits what you've written. It's quite interesting too, because in some respects, your, your career has been quite traditional. You haven't gone down the New Zealand yeah. Idol route or the X Factor route, you actually sent in. I know, it's I a... keep saying this, because I keep ex people ask me, how did you get a record deal? And I'm just like, I almost don't want to tell you because it's, it's kind of something that doesn't happen now. And I, you know, I feel like when people ask me, how could I get a record deal? I don't want to say, we'll send a tape into a label because it's probably not the way it works. I was just lucky that I did that a little bit before the th things like YouTube and MySpace and these sort of idol shows were very, you know, much a way of getting into the industry. Um, but yeah, it was kind of strange. <laughs> and like I said, I, at that age, I actually didn't take it that seriously. I kind of just got, you know, this opportunity to be amongst a record label and thought, well, why, why would I say no? But not really thinking that I really wanted to do this. So it's taken a few years for me to understand that this is really my passion and what I love to do. Yeah, it's weird. A, it was fantastic, <laughs> yeah. but old-fashioned almost. It yeah, seems, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that those terms actually are, are helpful, are they? Um, <laughs> now, you've performed live before. Yes. But this yeah. is your first tour, isn't it? You've yeah. not been on the road before. No, so we've played a lot of shows, um, but there'll mostly be events that we get invited to and that kind of thing. And um, the tour is really, I guess, the first kind of opportunity for me to have a Jamie McDowell show that the focus is on showing people my new stuff and obviously celebrating the old album. Um, the old album, you know, back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it is... Um, you know, I've been working with a band for, I mean, really like four years when I think about it because a lot of my band that I have now played on my first record and met me when I was very young. So we have got quite a good show, I feel, that we've put together and it is nice to finally get to a stage to be able to really use it and show people what we've kind of been practising. So any expectations about the tour? Um, I'm probably quite, like, usually I try to be quite optimistic, but I do feel a little bit pessimistic about this tour as much as that. I'm sorry, that's a bad thing to say, but it's more that, um, I guess, you know, I, 
being my age and realizing that going to live shows isn't the most, um, I guess, isn't the thing that a lot of young kids are doing nowadays as much as they were back in the day where it was your only opportunity to meet the artists that you loved. So it is quite a chance now, you know, a chance that you take to go on tour and hope that people will come, but you just kind of have to play it by ear. I'm hoping, I, you know, I have had a lot of really loyal fans that have sort of stuck with me throughout the first record, so I am hoping to kind of get a few of those people along and finally meet them, I guess. So I think it will be um, really exciting for me to play, but I don't really have any expectations for it. Yeah. How do you find the whole social media thing and relating to fans? Because you, you do have a good, robust fan base. Yeah. How, how does that all work? It's a hard one because it's quite a scary thing from the outside and it feels like it's something that people have no control over. But I guess for me, I'm just starting to develop guidelines for it that just make everything a lot easier. You know, for example, I do try to use it in a very positive way. So obviously to promote my music, to talk to my fan base. But I think more importantly for me, um, get across messages about the charities and things that I'm passionate about just because it's such an easy way to do that and that's kind of where it takes away the fear factor is that you just kind of have to put it all into perspective you know as much as you're very accessible to everyone that can be a really great thing because I can you know find something I'm not too happy with that's happening in the world and explain it to people like that so I really love it yeah put a lot of effort into it <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Jamie McDowell, thank you so much. <laughs> thank Absolute you. pleasure. Absolute pleasure meeting you and all the best for the album. Thank and, you very um, much. Sure. <laughs> Good questions. <laughs> Do go to my website for more information, entertainmentnewzealand.com. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.